Hi everyone, I am Shade Vance. I am doing my discussion facilitation this week. And uh, the theory that I chose was the uncertainty, the uh, uncertainty reduction theory um, by uh, Charles Berger. And the chapter that I chose was chapter nine. Um, I chose this one here because uh, hopefully no one else chose this one here. The one I was originally gonna do, I did see that someone else did do it. Okay, so I'm going to just begin just reading mine. Uh, Berger's uncertainty reduction theory focuses on how human communication is used uh, to gain knowledge and to create understanding. The assumption that when strangers meet, their primary concern is one of, a, is one of uncertainty reduction or increasing predictability about the behavior of both themselves and others in the interaction. Berger believes that there are three major forces that drive us to reduce uncertainty. And they are anticipation of future interactions, uh, which means we will see these people again. Incentive value, the other person has something that we want. And deviance, their behavior is questionable or they're acting weird. Uh, Berger believed that we use uncertainty reduction to predict and to explain people. There are two questions that we uh, use whenever we do this. Um, and these two type of questions that we use are uh, behavioral and cognitive. Behavioral questions, of course, would be questions like, should I let them, should I let him open the door for me? Or when, uh, when you're on a date with someone new, while cognitive questions would be more in depth, like wanting to know what your new dating partner's motivation in life would be. Another important key to the uncertainty reduction theory are the accident, are the, <laughs> are the axioms uh, Berger proposed to explain a connection to his concept. The axioms are verbal communication, nonverbal warmth, informal seeking, information seeking, I'm sorry, self-disclosure, reciprocity, similarity, liking, and shared networks. Basically, what the definitions of each of these axioms, without having to go too far in detail, um, according to Berger, tells us is that the longer you speak to this new person or situation, the less stressed you become in all of these areas. Um, so for the question that said to apply it to everyday life, I used uh, the cat uh, the cat person uh, reading that was attached to this that we'd used um, because I used it because, I mean, it's obviously a real life experience. Uh, I don't know if it's a first hand experience for the person that wrote this or what, but um, I know for myself, I very, very loosely found myself in a situation like this. And I say very loosely because of the way that this ended. I've never been in a situation like that uh, towards the end, but I still loosely like relate to different things of this, um, of this reading. Um, so I have very loosely found myself in a situation like Margot, the main character. Um, Margot met Robert, a rather clumsy guy who she really wasn't even attracted to. Um, uh, but she was like, she could see herself dating him. Um, <clears throat> she, uh, I said that he, who at first seemed extremely disinterested in her. So he really wasn't really, he's, he noticed her, but she offended him within like the first like five minutes, like interacting with him. And um, it kind of like ended from there. Um, well, he came back one day and um, she got his number and or he gave he asked for her number because this time she didn't offend him. And uh, the pair began texting and immediately Margot was more of the initiator than Robert was. Majority of their conversations would start off with a joke that Margot initiated, but would soon die out um, until she would send another message, sparking the conversation to continue until it would again die out. Uh, Margot had only met each other briefly at her job when Robert asked her, uh, asked for her number, and instead of asking awkward, awkward questions, Margot would reassure herself mentally. Uh, things would change when they finally, you know, went on a date. Uh, so finally, um, by the time the two went on their first date, Margot was able to see things for herself to give herself um, to give herself the reassurance when she saw him. Um, while the date itself ended horribly. Examples of information seeking, reciprocity, and self-disclosure were amongst the axioms that stood out. Throughout the night, 
Margot experienced moments of high uncertainty, like when she was ID'd at the bar and the bouncer realized that she was too young to get in. Um, her uncertainty lowered, however, when Robert came out, gave her a kiss on the forehead and hugged her and told her, let's go to another bar. Um, and kind of this whole, this whole game kind of like kept going in circles. Um, she would feel low, feel kind of, you know, lowly of something. And then she would either give herself that reassurance for the entire night, um, or he would do something that gave her reassurance until initially it wound up ending and the night the night ended and she regretted it severely the next day and she ghosted him for three days and finally told him her friend took her phone and told her she was not interested in dating him anymore. Um, <clears throat> so the questions that I have for you guys were, have you experienced levels of high uncertainty when meeting someone new? If so, what? Um, the second question is, our book gave us examples of coping with uncertainty. Excuse me. What methods do you use to give yourself reassurance in moments of uncertainty when meeting a new person or in a new situation? What kinds of barriers do you think cause people to have moments of uncertainty? Like what kind of mental roadblocks do we, you know, have um, and so for the last part, the the um, research question that I proposed was, how do people use social media platforms to reduce uncertainty before face-to-face -face meetings? Um, before meeting someone new, many people experience anxiety and uncertainty, like I said before. Uh, the uncertainty reduction theory focuses on strategies used to decrease uncertainty during their first encounter with someone or something new. Uh, the theory for this research will apply to on online, offline behaviors. Uh, so beginning online, of course, and then going to offline to meet that person face to face. Uh, the theory would also be used in social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Each of the axioms Berger, defi Berger defined will need to be discussed like information seeking in order to make this research effective. Uh, that's pretty much all of my discussion facilitation. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.